All right. Are we starting? Yes. So. All right. Um, so. This is our, our career presentation with our military guests, and they will introduce as we go through our presentation. Uh, Ma'am, just to verify, we can still we can share our screens to the presentation. Great. All righty, everyone. Hello. Um, in the beginning, I said, hello, I'm the recruiter for the Air Force. My name is Thorne Tyman, and this is my presentation. Um, so this is the presentation I created just for y'all. Um, so welcome, Phoebe and Cyrus, and thank you for joining us on this, um, this presentation for you. Okay. So the question for the day before I start um, going straight into my presentation is, what belongs to you? Your friends use it most. The answer will be quote towards the ending of the presentation, but uh, once we, I'll see in the, what do you call it, the chat, um, just type your answers in there. Um, no matter what answer you give, you get a gift bag no matter what, um, and I'll collect, um, I'll connect with uh, Mrs. Zucker Brown to get that uh, gift bag over to y'all. All right? All right, introductions. My name is Lauren Tyman. I'm from the big island of Hawaii, um, or Hawaii. Um, I am 31 years of age. Uh, my gender binary pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, I was born on the Hilo side of the Big Island. I have, my parents are still together, um, and I have one younger brother and two younger sisters. My younger brother is in the United States Army, and my two younger sisters are still in high school. Uh, let's see. I have a seven-year-old border collie who is named is Mia, and she is the love of my life. Uh, my job in the Air Force is Security Forces, or AKA, are also known as Military Police. I've also done executive assistant work for the highest enlisted military grade on my installation, along with Base Honor Guard. And I will have been in charge of six private organizations that help airmen and their um, spouses uh, who, are, who are in need and are struggling. Um, I've been stationed in Texas, Wyoming, Boston, and now here in the East Bay. All right, for my agenda for my presentation, we're gonna go over my presentation goals, Air Force benefits, qualifications, why the Air Force, and then conclusion. So presentation goals, my goal here is to help you get a better understanding of the Air Force, uh, to help you have more options that could change your life forever, help you utilize skills that you have learned in school and what we're gonna give you in the Air Force that you have learned in your everyday life, to help you grow to become disciplined men and women to help you throughout your whole life and to help you rise to become the next elite that people look up to. We are here for you and your families. So what is it in it for you? The Air Force and Space Force mission is what we're gonna go over. The up to 100% free education, that's college tuition, along with bases and um, bases in the US and overseas. So Air Force Space Force mission. So yes, I am also the Space Force recruiter here. Um, and, my, and my job is just to take care of everyone in regards to Air Force and Space Force. So the first word that we're gonna cover is positive. Um, we want to foster a, po a positive culture that is reinforced by immediate feedback and welcomes diversity. Um, the flexibility of the Air Force has changed over the years and we have made it a lot safer for members um, as they are going through the process and as they are in the Air Force now. Teamwork. We want to enable and want the need to work alongside your fellow brothers and sisters in arms to get your task completed with and reach for victory together. Individuality is great, but we can always accomplish, accomplish the mission better when we do it together. Members are put into leadership roles at an early age, and that helps expand their concepts of understanding and influence. The next word that we're gonna cover is professionalism. We want to encourage individuals to strive for success in both their professional and personal lives, no matter what goals they have like school, job training, and job experience. We want airmen to be innovative. And what that means is we want them to introduce, discover, and expand on innovative efforts that help their workspace and the mission. An expertise or an enterprise is never successful being stuck in one idea or one mindset. And the last one is being courageous. We want our airmen to have courage to share their ideas and to step out of their comfort zones and to share their experiences with others. Being courageous can also be translated to one of our core values. We have three of them, and that, ex that is excellence in all we do. Be the best, do the best, and live as the best. You are the future, and the future is now. All right, so I'm going to cover Community College of the Air Force. In regards to education, um, my three other brothers and sisters 
um, we'll discuss that more in detail. But I'm going to discuss the difference um, between the branches. So Community College of the Air Force, the Air Force is the only um, institution or only branch that has its internal college, okay? Which that means is as you go through basic training and technical school, you will start to automatically gain college credits that is transferable to an associate's degree that the Air Force gives you, okay? Um, and we're the only branch that does that. The examples that I have on the screen is an associate's and a bachelor's degree that I have gotten um, that I paid nothing towards, okay? So a lot of people say it might take a little time for you to get it, but traditionally, I got my associate's degree in two years. Naturally, when you go through normal college or you go to a college not within the Air Force or not within the military, it would normally take you two years anyway. I got my bachelor's in four years, which is naturally four years that you would receive your bachelor's anyway, okay? And with that, I have my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, working on my current master's degree, and I paid zero dollars for any of my education, okay? Um, and one thing that I want to iterate is that when we go to tuition assistance, that is for every branch, okay? So bases in the U.S., we're just gonna go, it's just gonna float through. Um, we have over 100 bases in the U.S. and overseas. The ones that are gonna be listed or highlighted here in yellow are where the Air Force has sent me or where they sent me for training. So I've been to quite a few places. Um, I've visited a lot of states and I've visited a lot of overseas. A lot of the connected overseas ones will be towards my two deployments. I've deployed to Afghanistan and I've also deployed to Saudi Arabia. So qualifications, you have to be 17 to 39 years old, 17 with parent consent. For 39 year olds, you can join the Air Force as long as you, make, you go to basic training before your 39 year birthday. Okay. I mean, your 40-year-old birthday. Um, have good moral character and willingness to learn. In regards to good moral character, during my initial interview, I will see if you are qualified to be part of the Air Force because it's not saying that we want to select the elite or select select individuals. We want to make sure that the Air Force is a great option for you, right? Because we have three other branches or four, five um, other branches that are could also be good options for you, okay? So we want to make sure that those are best fits for you. Meet the minimum Air Force physical requirements. And that means you have to meet a certain height and age, I mean, height and weight requirement, and that's it. In regards to the PT tests, such as push-ups, sit-ups, um, and the run, that will be in training, and you'll learn that all, you'll learn that when you go through. For high school, you have to have either a high school diploma or general equivalency diploma, a GED. Um, and there are certain scores that you have to take for the ASVAB or the battery. Um, score over a 31, um, to get into the Air Force or score over 50 to get in the Air Force with a GED. And in order for you to, to accomplish all of this, you have to complete a four or a six year contract, okay? So why the Air Force? The Air Force has better, better quality of life and you can look that up on yourself. Um, in regards to better quality of life, we have upgraded and renovated facilities such as dorms and dining halls. Um, we have what's called HOPS, Help Our People Save, which is called um, flights within the U.S. and overseas. Um, all you do is go to a base that actually has aircrafts and they'll send you off as they go for missions. Um, physical and base recreational areas such as clubs, movie theaters, bowling alleys, skate parks, pools, and skills development centers, um, which is arts and crafts and automotives. And then we also have outdoor recreational and tickets and travel opportunities and events like equipment rentals and cheaper costs for tickets and parks and vacation packages, such as Disneyland, or if you wanna to go to the Bahamas, we have cheaper packages for those. In regards to Air Force College and credits that transfer, um, Air Force College, we already spoke about the Community College of the Air Force, but what it means by transfer is Community College of the Air Force is regionally accredited, which means it is the most or one of the most flexible credit accreditation that you can receive in regards to college, college credits, all right? Um, we put our members at a young age in leadership roles, and we want to make sure they understand that you can be a leader at any point um, and that we have the tools to teach you to do that. Uh, naturally, our, short, our deployment cycles are shorter than the other branches, um, but that's just, just by mission base. And then our primary mission is to develop professional young men and women, because we want to make sure that you're prepared to do the Air Force, and when you decide that you want to leave the Air Force, that you are prepared to become an adult and do what you need to do when you're out there, okay? And the answer for the riddle in the beginning is your name. 
they, you have your own name, but your friends use it the most, okay? Um, as we go, uh, we cover our presentation goals, Air Force benefits, qualifications, and why the Air Force. Um, here's my contact information. My, again, my name is Staff Sergeant Thorne and Timon. There's my phone number um, then, and my address and my email if you don't want to talk on the phone, okay? I'm open to text messages, calls, and emails, um, whatever is preferable for you and whatever you feel comfortable. And then I think towards the end, we'll go over questions. Let me unshare this. And I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I just shared contact info. So we'll move on to our next speaker. I guess, I guess I'll go. I guess I'll go next. <laughs> okay, no, no, go ahead. Okay, I guess, I guess I'm going next. All right. Well, hello again. Uh, Petty Officer Meyer with the Navy. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. All right. Everybody see that? All right. Thank you. Good. All right. So, um, yeah, thank you. I think it's uh, staff sergeant Damon. Um, I'm not, I don't want to go over uh, too much of the same things uh, as she went over. Um, as far as the benefits uh, and everything goes, they're pretty much the same across the board. So touch a little bit on um, some of the education benefits. I'm gonna talk more about um, the NROTC program or the Navy Reserve Officer Training Corps. Um, so this is kind of one option if your plans are, uh, you wanna to go to college right after high, uh, right after high school. Uh, this is one option that is, you know, if you're eligible for it, it's, you know, high, highly recommend because there is no obligation for it. Um, so, Let's see here. All right, so briefly, so you want to go to college, um, if that's if that's the case. Um, so we'll go ahead. So we'll talk about the benefits of uh, NROTC versus um, other programs. So with with the NROTC, um, upon completion of of your degree, um, you're going to be commissioned as a naval officer. Um, so basically, whatever you got your degree in, immediately after college, and you're going to go straight into working in the field that you got your degree in. Um, so this comes with your full tuition paid, $180,000 scholarship, um, plus uh, $250 to $400 a month uh, stipend to pay for you know fund money. Uh, when you're in college, I mean, you have to eat. Uh, you gotta, you know, you want to have time, you know, money to spend, you know, go out with friends and things like that. Um, you, you get the, it provides you that as well. Um, you also get money for your books and supplies, so seven hundred fifty dollars per year. Um, and so the school, there's over one hundred sixty uh, school uh, colleges that offer NROTC. I'll show you a list of, of, of a few in a minute. Um, but notably, some of the ones that uh, are, are somewhat local: um, Berkeley and uh, California State University, CSU Berkeley and CSU Los Angeles is uh, a few of them. And then uh, it also includes the nurse corps programs if somebody's interested in uh, medical school as well. Uh, so for eligibility, uh, so though uh, I heard we have a someone who's a freshman or about to be a freshman and a sophomore, so this is perfect for you. Um, basically, they're go, um, one of the requirements is you keep your GPA up. It's looking for a minimum cumulative of 3.0 GPA. Um, so what you do now in school is going to greatly impact your eligibilities into colleges and, and programs like this. 
Um, so you want to keep your keep your scores up. Uh, so basically, you either need to be a U.S. citizen, um, a naturalized citizen, or in the process of becoming a naturalized citizen. Um, this is open to high school juniors and seniors. Uh, so for those of you who are not yet a junior or a senior, um, what you can be doing now to prepare is keep your grades up. Um, so you will you will need to be able you will need to take the ACT and the SATs. Um, so this is saying that you, you will need a for your ACT a combined of math and English 21 and 22. Um, so the bare minimum combined would be a 43, but the combined 47 is what you want to be at least that to be competitive. Um, your SAT scores uh, combined 450 and 550. Um, and then the, to be competitive, you want to have an 11, 1150. So you can have your minimum scores, but obviously you're competing against the whole nation of other students who are trying to get into this program. So you really want to be competitive. Um, so one of the nice things about this is you can pick a degree in literally any field um, that the school offers, that the college that you want to go to offers. I mean, you can get your degree in basket weaving if that's a thing, um, and still be eligible. Um, but there is a little, there are a little bit extras that you need to add on to that. Um, so you will need to enroll in two naval science courses per per year, so as electives. Uh, so you might want you might have to swap out a few electives for these particular ones. Um, you'll have to be enrolled in calculus, physics, um, national security policy, uh, U.S. military affairs as an elective. Um, English grammar and composition. Uh, so those, you'll have to throw those into your uh, into your studies, but like I said, you can get your degree in anything as long as you have those courses in there. And the ones with asterisks, is if you're asterisks, um, if you're planning on going the nurse core route, you, those, you don't need to be enrolled in those uh, particular classes. Um, and so the, the nurse core program, it's uh, once you get your degree, you are guaranteed it's a four year commitment um, working as a nurse for the United States Navy. Um, and also this also applies to the minority serving uh, institution. Uh, and you do not need to combine SAT and ACT for that. So kind of what it looks like. Um, why NROTC and why should you enroll earlier rather than later. So I think I mentioned before, this is a no obligation program. Um, at no point are you obligated to join the Navy if you apply for NROTC. Um, so if you put in your application now, assuming that you're eligible, and you get, you get accepted into NROTC, this does not mean you are obligated to join the Navy. You have just, it all this means that you have been approved of an NROTC scholarship and it's there waiting for you if you want to take it. Um, coming into a recruiting office to talk to one of us about more details on how to get your process rolling, there is no commitment. Um, going, starting your first year of school, uh, being in college, doing a full one year of college at, at, at whatever university you go to, um, still there is no commitment. Um, you can finish your first year of college. Let's say you go to um, you go to you go to Berkeley. Uh, you complete a, a whole entire year of college there, and you decide that you know that it, it's been great. You know, I but I, I've done some things reconsidering. I really don't think the Navy is right for me. That's fine. You can drop out. You can drop out of your school. Um, and there are no repercussions. As long as you don't start your first day of class for your second year, um, there's zero obligation. You just got a free year of college. Um, so basically you got a free $45,000 just for applying. Um, and so if you decide to take another college route and you know pay the rest of your way doing something else, that's fine. Or if you decide college or military isn't for you, uh, no, no problem, no hard feelings you have. You just got a complete one free year of college. Um, so if you, uh, any of the NROTC programs, um, once you're done with college, assuming you do take the whole, go the whole way through, um, upon graduating, getting your degree, um, you are going to be going straight into your career field. So let's say you got a, a degree, like a STEM degree, an engineering degree of some kind. Um, 
immediately after after college, you're going to be working in that field uh, as an engineering officer or something, or um, uh, a nuclear engineering officer, something like that. You're going to be going straight into that field upon graduation. Um, if you are at, if you're going the nurse corps route, um, same thing. Immediately after college, you are going to be a nurse for the United States Navy with a four-year obligation. Um, the other programs are a five-year obligation. Um, but prior to that, if you, like I said, if you only want to do the one, if you only do one year and be done, uh, there is no obligation for joining the Navy. So this is uh, here. This is a list. Um, I don't know if you can see them. It's a list of some of us, a few of the schools that um, offer NROTC. Like I said, um, UC Berkeley, UC Los Angeles, um, see UC, uh, University of San Diego, a lot, a lot of ones here in, in California. Um, and you can go on their website and see a more extensive list. But these are a few uh, noteworthy colleges. Um, uh, Harvard is one of them as well. Um, and so, like I said, so this does cover uh, $180,000 of your tuition and all costs. Um, if your school does actually cost more than $180,000 for a total of uh, tuition, books and supplies, stipend, and uh, room and board, um, if it does go over $180,000, you will have to pay out of pocket for the room and board, but your tuition, regardless of how high the tuition is, is covered. Uh, but you may have to make up the cost of room for it, oh, over $180,000. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. I know I went through it fairly quick, but again, uh, my name is Petty Officer Meyer. Um, this is some contact information. You can uh, scan one of these QR codes. The one on the um, left side is my contact information, and the right side is um, basically how to uh, is to get in more information about NROTC and uh, and. Uh, their website apply there. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we can move on to our next speaker. Who's going next? Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm the US Army recruiter from Hayward. And I'm just going to go through my slides because I have some too. Okay, can everybody see this? So, yeah. like I said, I'm Cesar Montalvo with the US Army. And this is my Army story. So I've been in for nine years, almost 10. And I actually joined in Texas. I'm from Texas originally. And I joined as a junior in high school. So I've been in for a while. Um, this isn't something I always thought I was going to do, but I'm so grateful for the opportunities the Army gave me and all that I've accomplished since I've been in. So I'm originally from Corpus Christi, Texas, and I joined as a Sun for Delta, which is a chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear specialist. Um, since I've been in, I've been to Germany for four years. That was my first duty station, and I loved it. I got to travel, I got to explore, and I got to meet a lot of new people and work with different nationalities and different people from all over the world. So that was really fun and interesting. Um, after Germany, I went to Fort Hood, Texas, which I love too. From there, my unit actually deployed to Afghanistan and that was my first and only deployment so far. Um, it was a really great experience and I enjoyed that as well. After I left Fort Hood, I came here to the East Bay and it's very different. It's very new and I do love my job as being a recruiter and helping everybody join the army and change their lives and get to where they're supposed to be. Um, in the army, you do have your promotions, you do have your awards. So we are the biggest branch. That means we have a lot of opportunities to excel 
to go further in your career and to get promoted and to go to schools and just try to be above everybody and become the leader that you were born to be. So when people come in, they're scared because they don't know if this is the right choice for them or if this is something they wanted to do. Because a lot of times when you're a high school student, you don't know anything. So you're, you're trying to figure out life. You're trying to figure out what your purpose in life is for. So I think the army really helps with expanding your mindset and getting you to be where you're supposed to be. So in the army, we have values. We have loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. So these are what we live by. You have to be loyal. You have to, you have to be there for each other. And we are one big family. We are a network. So the team that you work with day to day in and out, that's your family. So you just have to be there for each other, just like you would do for your family, for your sister, your brother, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your grandparents. I'm just scrolling through these because it's really long. Okay, so the process of joining most branches, 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 but I'm just, but I'm talking. You talk to a recruiter like all of us, and you just get some information from us. Um, every branch is different. Every branch has their own purpose, their own mission, and our mission is is big. We're the army. We're the biggest branch. We have many jobs that you can choose from, whatever you want to do. You can do nursing, you can do mechanics, you can be in technology. Um, it's really whatever you want to do, whatever you're qualified to do, okay? And here are just some of the branch, the jobs we have. So we have infantry, we have our combat jobs, infantry, field artillery, um, engineers, aviation, armors then you have your support jobs so those are your medical those are your chemical your transportation your military police your jag if you ever wanted to work with a lawyer there's your chance to working with a lawyer and just getting into that field and just like a, a few of the other recruiters stated we mainly have the same benefits there's really no difference um, in the army though you can go to school as soon as you graduate your job training, the Army will start your tuition assistance benefits. And then, like I was saying earlier, you don't come in the Army maybe as a leader, maybe you do, but if you're starting out as straight out of high school, you don't know a lot of things. I know I didn't, so the Army taught me and molded me into the soldier and the leader I am today. So we have schools for that. We have mentorship. We have we have things to get you there, tools to get you there. So if you're scared of like, maybe like this isn't for you, or maybe you're just scared because it's the unknown, don't be scared. Put yourself in the situation and you will overcome it. But don't think that you're gonna be by yourself doing it because you have leaders like your NCOs, such as myself, to help you get there. And like I was saying, the Army is very diverse. We're all from, different parts of the US and from other locations as well. So you're going to grow a family and just be there for each other and work together and fight the same fight with each other, okay? And you do work with other branches. Like this picture of me right here is with Air Force actually. So it's pretty cool. In the Army, you can go to different locations. So we do have combat um, locations where you would go for deployment, which is fine. Don't be scared. Um, we all do it. It's not guaranteed either. So if you're scared because you might deploy, don't be, because most people don't deploy anymore. They're actually bringing soldiers back. So don't worry about that. But there are overseas locations like Korea, Alaska, Hawaii, um, Italy, and Germany. And sometimes Japan, if you can get that. Um, all our income is the same. I would say, though, we do have a really fast promotion rate. Um, you can get promoted really quick in the Army just because we're the biggest branch. We're always changing. We're always growing. People leave and people come in all the time. So one thing I will say is I, I've only been in for nine years and I'm about to hit E7, which is Sergeant First Class. 
And that's really good for, you know, fast tracking and just staying motivated and staying consistent and growing as a person and as a leader. And as far as the army, we do have exciting experiences. If you want to do crazy fun things, there is airborne, you jump out of helicopters, um, US Army Ranger School. If you're really into combat and you really want to be the elite, the top of the, the top of the teams, the top of the army forces, do US Army Ranger or US Army Special Forces. We do have air assaults, which is fun. And another thing I don't have listed here, it's it's excitement, yes, but it's more of a, a job, a career is the Army WAFT. So it's the warrant officer flight training. So if you want to be a pilot, it is so easy to be a pilot outside, straight outside of high school. So if you're like, man, I want to fly helicopters, I want to fly Black Hawk or Chinook, um, the Army actually offers that. So you have to put a packet, you have to be qualified like the other recruiter stated, you have to be at least 17 years old with a parent consent or 18. And you have to graduate from high school, of course, and just meet the qualifications of height and weight and passing a physical test because you will have to do that. But you can definitely apply to be a flight officer. And I think what I'm what the army is really good at is just growing and getting to where you want to be. There's people that do their three years and get out and there's people that do their 20 years and get out. If, if you're one of those people that, you know, like, Hey, sorry, Montavo, I see myself doing this for the long haul. I want to do my 20 years and get out. And you join right, right after high school. If you join at 18 years old, you retire at 38 and, um, you'll be set. But if you wanna do three years, you can do three years and grow so much from the army, whether it's your leadership, whether it's building up your resume, getting getting some, um, I can't even think of the word, some just experience under your belt and you know, going to college, having the army pay for it, all the branches are gonna have, you, have your education paid for. So don't worry about that. But it's really about choosing the branch that fits you, is works best for you because Maybe you want to be in the Navy and you want to be on a ship, or maybe you want to be in the Army and you want to be a pilot, or go into infantry, go into Army Ranger, or go into our nursing program. There's so many options, and it's really up to you at the end of the day. So just get your information, get your resources, figure out what's best for you. And then if you want to reach out to a recruiter, reach out to a recruiter. If you want to reach out to the Army, reach out to me. I will help you out and definitely get you to where you should be. Um, thank you for your time and my Instagram is right there and here is my card. Y'all have a good day. I'm gonna um, do this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and I've been putting everyone's emails in the chat as well. Um, and so next up, uh, we have Sergeant Rubio. Yes, ma'am. First, um, I would like to thank everybody today. And Ms. Zuckerberg, thank you so much for having us. I know there was a lot of going back and forth, so I appreciate you setting this up. Like I said, my name is Sergeant Rubio. I was born and raised in Union City, graduated from James Logan High School back in 2012. Um, I've been in for six years. I started in the reserves, which it's very difficult to sometimes get a reserve spot, but I was very fortunate at the time uh, I have my mom and my dad in the local area, my older sister, uh, niece, so it's cool that I get to work here because I get to see them all the time. I am a 3043 supply operations and admin specialist, which if you want to compare it to an outside job, it's kind of like the equivalent of a Walmart manager, I guess. We make sure that, you know, everything's stocked, everybody has what they, ha what they need, um, that kind of thing. So it sounds... I love my job. It sounds kind of boring, but it's it's a really good experience and it's definitely a job that you can transfer out into the civilian world and do really well with. Uh, like everybody else stated, um, the Marine Corps is not very different in aspects of getting education paid for, of getting experience, of getting to travel. We all get to travel. We all get to do really cool things. 
uh, but the Marine Corps does stand out for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons is we're the smallest branch. So we are about a little bit less than 180,000 Marines, which means our jobs are very specialized. Altogether, we have uh, about 336 jobs. And out of those, only 10% are infantry jobs, which a lot of people wouldn't believe because Marines are known to all uh, to be infantry. But in reality, we're just all riflemen. So we all qualify with the rifle. We make sure that we know how to shoot, things like that. But we are not all infantry. Our core values are honor, courage, and commitment. Those are the three things that all Marines stand by. We make sure that you know we're always able to represent the Marine Corps, that we hold it to the highest standards, whether that's just being a good person, physically fit, uh, that sort of thing. One of the best things about, that I feel at least, about the Marine Corps is that Marines are the only branch that guards the US embassies around the world. So we do have the opportunity to travel a lot. We have embassies in every single country. Um, so you have the opportunity to travel there, to guard embassies, to meet important people, to shake hands, build relationships with other countries, uh, things like that. Another cool thing about the Marine Corps is that we do have the Marine Corps band. Uh, one of them is the president's own. And if you've ever watched a presidential inauguration, you've seen them play. Uh, on top of that, we do have a lot of uh, leadership roles and responsibilities. Since we are very small, we force Marines from the time that they graduate boot camp into leadership positions. A lot of the times we are not prepared and we are not ready and we feel like we're going to fail, but that's what you have others above you to help you grow, help you become the best version of you. And on top of all that, it's really cool because you get to be paid to be in shape. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely hate running, but I do it because I am paid to do it now. So it's not as bad. Uh, in the Marine Corps Reserves, we do have a lot of different uh, foundations to help local communities. One of those is Toys for Tots. I'm not sure if you guys have seen it in the local area, but we do set up um, basically ways to get toys for kids that are underprivileged, make sure that, you know, foster kids, um, families that might just not be able to afford toys, have the opportunity to still celebrate the holidays and be able to, you know, at the very least get a toy for Christmas. Um, a lot of people believe that Marines only travel or get deployed for combat related deployments. We do get sent out on deployments for combat related purposes, but we also do a lot of humanitarian efforts. Myself, I was deployed last year uh, and I got to travel around Central and South America for six months. Uh, that included Honduras, Guatemala, Brazil, Belize, Panama, El Salvador, and Nicaragua. I got to go back and forth there, travel all over, get to meet people, get to experience the culture. Um, and I got paid to do it. So it's a great opportunity to get out of your comfort zone, meet other people, train alongside other countries, but also, you know, take advantage and get paid to travel where others have to pay to travel, you get to travel and get paid. Um, we do have a lot of certifications available. Uh, so not only in your job schools will you get certifications, but a lot of these you'll be able to transfer outside into the civilian world. Uh, for example, if you wanted to be a mechanic, uh, you'll get trained as a motor transportation op uh, operator and you'd get to take the certification you earn and translate it into a civilian career and grow from there, you get the experience, all that good stuff. Um, let me see here. We do have uh, one of the fun facts that a lot of people don't know is that the Marine Corps has the sixth largest air force in the world which it's kind of weird if you think about it, but Marines are uh, amphibious. So not only do we cover land, we also cover sea and air. So we cover every single aspect that you could think other than you know our brothers in the Air Force that guard the space. Um, what else? The Marine Corps does have the longest and toughest boot camp. So our boot camp is three months. Um, and honestly, it says a lot about you if you are able to get through what is known as the toughest boot camp in the world. Um, 
obviously, you know, Army Rangers, they go through a lot. Our Navy SEALs, they go through a lot. But across the board, Marine Corps boot camp is extremely tough. And it does expose a lot of people's strengths. Um, at the end of the day, boot camp is meant for you to succeed. It is meant for you to pass to graduate as a United States Marine, but it also takes who you are as a person, cleans you up, and brings you back as a Marine who's able to dress in the dress blues and really represent, you know, the Marine Corps altogether. Uh, if any of you guys have any questions, I'd love the opportunity to sit down, speak to you. Our qualifications are just about the same as the other branches. 17 with parent permission. We do, however, only go up to the age of 29. You have to be in boot camp by the time you turn 29. But we do have a lot of availability in the reserves, in active duty. We have the opportunity to help you become a commissioned officer. Uh, all those sorts of things are definitely available for you. The first step is to pick up the phone, call, text any of the branches, any other recruiters, see what's out there because I don't know about a lot of the students, but when I was in high school, the military was the furthest thing in my mind. I would have never dreamt of joining the military. I actually had a Marine Corps recruiter approach me my senior year of high school. And when he asked me if I wanted to enlist, I, my, literal, my literal words were, hell no. And two years later, I ran into him and he came up to me and asked me what happened to no. So you never know what's meant for you if you don't just sit down and find out the opportunities that are available to you. I'll put my Instagram and my email in the chat. And if any of you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you all so much. Um, there's a lot of great opportunities out there. Cyrus and Phoebe, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute or put them in the chat. Um, but this is a great opportunity to ask your question. Yes. Um, my question is, um, well, because I, I heard um, Air Force has a physical uh, requirement. Um, so what about the other um, three? Do, do they have like height requirement or weight requirement for the other three? Anybody want to answer that one? <laughs> yeah, we, we all have a height and weight requirement. They're all like um, a little different, but majority they're about the same. Yeah, I would I would say the, the physical requirements are pretty much the pretty much the same across the board. Uh, the only difference is really the age requirement with the Marines. Uh, but I mean, if we're still in high school, I guess you're all eligible, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> So in regards to so Air Force, in regards to height and weight requirements, okay, um, yes, we do have specific requirements for the Air Force. Ours follows a chart, and other branches will follow either a percentage or a chart. So I think the Navy and the Army are followed by percentages. The Marines and the Air Force are followed by a hard chart that we follow that has a specific height and an attached weight. So that is the differences between all four of us. Right. Yeah. Um, because yeah, we do have a height, height and weight, but also if you don't meet those, if you do meet the you know, percentage, then you know, body fat percentage, then uh, you're still you're still eligible. Other questions? Thank you. Cyrus, what about you? No questions right now. Okay, well, if you think of something, um, there's contact information um, in the chat. Um, I have a sign. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.